Hey there! Welcome back to another vlog. Um, this time, just giving any updates that I do have on this community guideline situation. Also, just wanted to talk about some things that aren't YouTube related, but it also gives me an opportunity to rant a bit on this just total just bullshit. I, I mean, I'm so sick of this. I really am. Can I go a year on this channel or on YouTube without having to deal with these type of strikes? I mean, I dealt with two of them last year, and thankfully they got resolved pretty quickly, but they happened like one after another, which was really, really stressful for me. And uh, they were copyright related. This community guidelines thing, I don't think I've ever had a community guidelines strike on this channel, and if I have, it's been years. Also, it, it must have happened so long ago, I don't remember. I just hope this gets resolved. I really do, for my sake, for YouTube's sake, for everyone's sake, because this is just an example of how messed up things are. I don't want to sit, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't want to sit here and keep making videos like this, talking about how messed up YouTube is, and how YouTube needs to fix things, and how YouTube needs to change things, and so on. I, I would rather not sound like a broken record. But if this keeps happening, I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to keep saying things. I'm going to keep speaking my mind. I'm definitely not going to shut up about it. Because this is the type of thing that people need to know about. If I just get this out to just a few people... That's more than enough for me. So anyway, as you can see, I have a new chair that I'm sitting in. I love this chair. It's super comfortable. Expect this view in uh, every review from now on. I, I think it's actually pretty cool because it makes it, it kind of, it's like, hey, he reviews movies like a boss. But also, um, it, it's... I don't know, adds a little, it just makes things look a little bit more professional kind of thing. It's like, oh, I have a nice, big, comfy chair. Come with me uh, and uh, enjoy uh, my reviews uh, while I'm sitting in this big, comfy chair. Hopefully it will uh, uh, help and it will uh, even more emphasize the sort of uh, down-home feeling I'm trying to have with my, my content. My content isn't super, super... Uh, processed or scripted because I, I want it to be like I'm talking to you like I'm talking to you the audience like you're right here and I'm talking to you none, none of this oh I'm looking up a script and I'm reading off of it or any of that I'm talking to you and it's all off the top of my head so it's like a, a, I'm discussing with you whatever is on my mind so th this kind of helps with that sort of atmosphere also, it's just so comfortable. Oh, man, it makes such a difference. I, I, I sit down and I do a lot of reviews on this channel. And and uh, having a chair that's this comfortable is huge. And it was a steal. I got it for 15 bucks at Goodwill. So it was a steal. The only problem I have with it is there, there's like some, it makes some squeaking noises when I move it around a certain way. Uh, but normally I don't have to move that much because as soon as I get... In this, in this chair and I get comfortable, I don't want to move. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, that was a good thing. Picked that up uh, from Goodwill yesterday. Uh, but afterwards, there was just this kind of string of kind of just bad luck that kind of happened. My mom got in a re got rear-ended uh, in her Subaru. She's fine, thank God. But she was just merging onto two, I-205 somewhere. And some guy ran into her. He rear-ended her. She has to get her car fixed. Um, because I think it was like the right side was pretty messed up. And thankfully though we have a backup. It's uh, my stepdad's truck. So she's driving. She drove that to work today. But um, so thankfully nothing happened. But I mean that's just that doesn't happen that often. Mom's a pretty safe driver. So, uh, she hasn't really gotten in an accident in years. So, that happened. And then I'm just browsing on YouTube. I'm just listening to Valco, uh, Falco uh, songs. 
because I really like, I, I watched uh, Todd of the Shadows review, uh, his uh, One Hit Wonderland review of Rock Me Amadeus, and I, I liked the video, and there were some songs that he mentioned by Falco that I was like, ah, oh, you know, I actually want to listen to some of them. And I actually liked a lot of them, like Vienna Calling, Jenny. Uh, so, I, Falco, I honestly think was a genius. He's really, really talented. He was really, really talented. He knew how to create uh, some really wonderful compositions. And really knew how to uh, work with melodies. Uh, he was a maestro of melodies, so to speak. And uh, it's too bad he died real young. He died at the age of 40. And it was in a car accident, and he was in the middle of trying to make a comeback, but then uh, he got hit by a car, and he had other problems in his life as well. He had uh, issues with drugs and alcohol, uh, like a lot of pop stars at the time did. Uh, but he it did leave an indelible mark on uh, music, and uh, so that, that was pretty, that was fun to listen to Val Falco. Uh, and, uh, I, I saw a few other things, just kind of catching up on stuff, and then all of a sudden, I see the dreaded red box of doom, and it said, and I, I automatically assumed it was a copyright strike, because that's what I normally get, so in the defense box, I typed in, uh, defense for copyright, that was incorrect, because it was a community guideline strike, but I didn't know that until afterwards, so I sent them an email as soon as I could. I sent the creator support, uh, YouTube's creator support, an email as soon as I possibly could, outlining the problems, what was going on. And then I went in and checked 30 minutes later on my channel, and, and I see that there's this thing underneath the community guidelines strike that say appeal was rejected. And I'm like, already that fast? In like less than 30 minutes? And like... Three o'clock in the morning? So are you telling me there actually was a human being who watched that video and determined, nope, uh, even though I t filed in my uh, dispute the wrong way, and I, I, my bad, it, it's my mistake. You can't blame me, though, because most of the time when I see these red boxes, I, I, it's usually a copyright strike. So just out of, I guess, instinct, I filled it out differently. Next time, if I get one of these, I'll definitely look through it a little bit better. But I was shocked, and I was just like, what is this? And, and it was late at night, and I, I just wanted to get it taken care of. So, yeah, so that's why that happened. And, I, and I've detailed, I, I think I have a legitimate reason for my error. I hope YouTube looks into it at least. But all I can do now is wait, because I sent them an email, I sent them another email talking about the, the appeal being rejected, I, I sent them an email about uh, my uh, monetization being taken away from my tribute to Bill Paxton, and I got a, a response back for that, and it was like, the, it was just an automated response, it said, oh, your, uh, your appeal for monetization has been rejected, on this video and that's all that it said it didn't even describe why it was rejected it didn't say anything it just said it was rejected so I ranted about this thing before on the 1984 to mini rant where I was talking about their new monetization policy and now I'm experiencing it firsthand and this is terrifying this is scary this is really scary folks this is proof that YouTube was dumb enough to put an automated system, the same type of automated system that doesn't work very well, is ineffective with copyright strikes. They put the same automated system in charge of policing YouTube for community guidelines. Huge problem. Huge issue. Because this, these type of uh, programs, they work on algorithms and things like that. So if the algorithm determines that some something in your tags or something or whatever is considered inappropriate content, your channel is automatically punished for it. There's no defense for it. You can't you don't get a warning. You don't even get an explanation as to why. All I got 
was John Wick Chapter 2 movie review is filed under inappropriate content. That's all I want. That's all. And I, I didn't see that until I checked my video manager and saw the video itself. And it said video removed for inappropriate content. Because all, all I had before was an email that said uh, your video was removed for a violation of the community guidelines. And all of that stuff that I already met and talked about in my previous, in, in the mini rant that I posted last night. So, I'm just, I'm just sitting here and I'm like, okay, this is, this is, this is just messed up. Because, what was inappropriate about the video? I mean, that's the thing. Uh, if, it's one thing, if you want to police things, you want to clean up YouTube, fine. But at least let me know what I'm doing wrong. What am I saying? What was it in the video that was inappropriate? What was it? You can't just tell me it was inappropriate and then that's it. Because that's not going to fix anything. That's gonna, not going to solve anything. And it's also completely, totally unfair to the content creator. What am I supposed to do now? How, how am I supposed to know what I'm not supposed to say or do if you don't, you aren't detailed and you aren't telling me what I did wrong? I can't make corrections if I don't know what to correct. If I have to correct anything in the first place. Damn right I'm pissed. This is unnecessary. YouTube needs to stop dicking around with this shit. You need to start taking this seriously. You have millions of YouTubers. Thousands of content creators. And you're doing them all a disservice by having copyright and community guidelines be the job for an automated program. YouTube, you make enough money to hire people to do this job. You Google sure as hell makes enough money to do this job. Google definitely does. Sure as hell. Sure as heck. You want me to say heck? You want me to say Hades? You want me to say H-E double hockey sticks? If you want me to not swear or to not say certain things, then tell me what I'm not supposed to say. Not this vague explanation in your community guidelines thing where it just says violence, content, you know, uh, harm and danger and endangerment against others. Uh, and, and I'm like, there's nothing in my review that was encouraging violence upon anyone else. I was just describing the film and what happened in it. Nothing else. If my review of John Wick Chapter 2 is considered inappropriate content by YouTube's community guidelines, then under the same process, every single review of the film and every single trailer or clip from the movie should also be reviewed and removed by YouTube. Because my video didn't have anything that any of these other videos haven't already had. It didn't, I mean, it's just, and this is a problem too, because people can make false claims. And then YouTube, because of the broken system, either A, rejects your appeal, or what you can't appeal again, which I think is really lame, because honestly, if there was an error made, I should be able to appeal again, but nope, you have to wait 60 days until you can appeal uh, another video. But I, it says you can only appeal the certain video once. One time only! Which is like, that's way, like at least a second try. I think at least a second try should be, would, would be all right. I don't think that's out of the question. I don't think that should be something that should be uh, too much to expect either. That's an unre unreasonable expectation to, for a second chance, especially for uh, false community guideline strikes. But I don't know what happened. This happened at like 1.40 a.m. And around the same time, my Bill Paxton video had its monetization under for review. So what I'm thinking is this was just an automa automated thing by some program. And 
I, I, I doubt in the in the program says we have we your video was filed under review and then we reviewed it and determined that it violated community guidelines. I'm like, I don't buy that somebody reviewed it. I don't buy that we reviewed it. I buy that an automated program reviewed it and then determined because of its algorithm and its programming that it violated any violated the guidelines. But um I don't believe a human being reviewed it. Because if a human being reviewed it, I have a hard time believing that that human being would give me a copy would give me a guideline strike and take my video down, which was a review of a movie. I, I highly doubt that would happen if there was a human being who actually looked at the video. Now I sent them follow up emails to the creator support. I sent uh, my partner uh, through uh, you, my uh, it's a different it's my YouTube partner. It's not YouTube. I sent them an email, letting them know what's going on, see if they can help me. I, I asked a question on the product forum, on the Google forums, on YouTube forums. Somebody replied and said, "Yeah, I don't see any reason why your video was flagged or removed." You seem to be following the rules really well. Yeah, I do. I haven't violated anything. I don't. I don't. I. 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 I pretty much go by the book. I don't even put clips of videos in my of movies in my reviews anymore, because I'm trying to adhere to YouTube's policies. I'm. I'm playing ball. I. I'm playing their game, and to see stuff like this happen is extremely frustrating to me. But yeah. Oh. So that's it. That's all I really have right now. I don't have any more updates. If I get any more, I will let you know. All I have to say is this. YouTube themselves says multiple times when you contact YouTube creator support. They say, oh, we'll get back to you in within one business day or less. If they do not contact me, they do not reply to me about what is going on, uh, or explain to me why my video was taken down, or what I can do, or they, if they do not resolve this situation by 1.49 uh, tomorrow morning, then I'm going to be pretty miffed, and I'm going to call YouTube out on it, because that's a violation of their own guidelines. Sorry, I don't think you get you you get a jail you know you get a get out of jail free card for violating your own guidelines. Hire a team of members, hire employees to manually review every single community guideline appeal and every single copyright strike appeal or just review every single one of them. Don't tell me it's not possible. I don't buy any of these reasonings. I really don't. If you need a big crew, you need a big team of YouTubers or a big team of other people to review stuff, then hire them. You're a big company. You're trying to go into TV and with YouTube TV and charge people 35 bucks. You got YouTube Red going on. And you're not willing to hire actual human beings to review all this stuff? I'm not talking two or three. I'm talking a whole room full of them. Other companies do this. Why, 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 why aren't you doing this? Why are you putting an automated system in charge of this? That's prone to bugs. That's prone to issues. That can suspend people's channels without warning for not violating anything. And... They can't do anything about it until after the channel is already suspended. Or just handing out strike after strike after strike without even letting the YouTuber explain themselves. Or even giving them an explanation for why it happened. Or what they violated. If anything at all. Ugh. So, yeah. So my thoughts on that. Uh, just a few quick things I want to talk about real quick before I go take some fucking Tylenol because I got a headache right now. 
talking about this. This just total BS. Since I'm still technically talking about stuff that's channel related, I guess I'll give you guys a little channel update. Um, Thankfully, this community guideline strike does not affect anything else on my channel. I can upload videos over 20 min over 15 minutes, no problem. All my monetization is still active, except for certain videos that aren't able to be monetized for some reason. Um, so there's that, which is good, which is really cool. So there's not any restrictions on that end. Thank God. Um, but I've been just stressed out with this kind of stuff, so... My plan was to review a bunch of X-Men movies, and I'm still going to do that leading up to Logan, uh, because I'm going to be seeing Logan with my stepdad on Sunday, so expect maybe a review of that on Sunday or Monday, but uh, next reviews I, I have planned are for X-Men. I, I, I watched X-Men, the first film again, and I really enjoyed it. That's probably going to be the next review once I feel a little bit better. Um... Hopefully I'll get it up sometime later today. If not, you know why? Because I'm just this. This is just all my focus is on this community guidelines thing right now. So um, it's hard for me to focus on anything else. It really is, and you can't blame me. So X Men. And what's kind of funny is I woke up this morning to nothing else matters by Metallica playing on my radio. So I'm like. Well, that's pretty fitting, because nothing else matters right now. And that is true, nothing else matters, except for a resolution to this situation. Now, but yeah, X-Men will be the next review, um, then X-Men 2, X-Men 3, uh, and I'm going to try to possibly get all three of those posted today. If that doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And if some of the X-Men reviews might just be out of order. And I'll do, you know, it just, it's just how it's going to have to be. Um, but I'm looking forward to revisiting them because, uh, it, you know, I think it's a great thing to do leading up to a Logan. And I know there are quite a few people who have asked me about my, my opinion on X-Men films in the comments. So I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. And next week, I'm going to be doing King Kong movie reviews leading up to Kong Skull Island. I'm going to go check that out. On Friday of next week. So, that is as long as this channel is still active. I have backup channels, so in case, God forbid, anything happens and I get like some multiple strike BS and I need to appeal this and appeal that in order to get my channel a backup. I have multiple different channels, uh, backup channels. Um, so, if you haven't subscribed to those already, subscribe to them just in case. Like the OCP TV, just type in the OCP TV and it'll pop up and you can subscribe to it. Um, I don't know if I verified it yet. I might have to verify it so I can upload videos over 15 minutes again. Uh, if that's the case, I'm going to have to maybe use a different phone number or something because I don't really have any uh, slots available on my cell phone. Uh, but, you know, I'll get to that when I get to that. I really don't want to have to go to a backup channel. I work my ass off on this channel, and I just now hit the 10,000 subscriber milestone, and, and I don't want that to go away because of community guidelines violations that I honestly don't think I violated. What did I do wrong? You know, persecute me if I deserve it, but, I, you know, don't persecute me and don't don't prosecute me if I don't deserve it. So, and now the John Wick Chapter 2 review is in limbo, so if it doesn't go back up, what, what am I going to do? I have to do a review of the film again? And just, or not? Am I, am I expected not to have a review of John Wick Chapter 2 on my channel? My favorite film of the year? Which I actually got people who saw the video to go see? I'm supposed to like just not do a review of John Wick Chapter 2 because, oh no, last time I talked about John Wick Chapter 2, community guidelines. If it's, a, if it's something in my tags, I don't know what it is. So I don't know what to do to avoid it from happening again. 
I'm just getting no help from YouTube right now. Nothing. There's no help. I just get a robot replying back to me. It's cold, hard, steel, dick, rain, reamed up my fucking ass, and it hurts, and it sucks, and I don't know what else to say. I don't know what to do. So just wait and hope and pray and my fingers crossed that I will somebody will actually look at my video and then see eh, it's just a review. Uh, anything that is violent is a reference is, is 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 referencing the film for criticism purposes, for educational purposes, which falls under your community guidelines guidelines. And other more positive th news, I did see some trailers that I really liked. I loved, I absolutely adored the trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, the most recent one. Kurt Russell has a cameo in it. Uh, the use of Fleetwood Max the Chain was inspired. And that trailer just made the movie look like a blast that could possibly be even better than Guardians of the Galaxy. And I love that film too. So, I am really, really looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I watched that trailer like three or four times when it when it got up. I liked it that much. The new trailer for Alien Covenant. It was better than the teaser. It was better than the prologue they did, which I thought was trying to be alien way too much. And it had a sort of fake out uh, reference to Kane and the chest burster. That if... This is a prequel. So, if anyone... If there's someone out there who had not seen Alien before, and they're watching Prometheus and then the sequel, and then watching Alien, which is supposed to, this is how they're supposed to be chronologically in order, they're not going to get that. Only people who have seen Alien are going to get that reference. Why are you making a prequel, a sequel, that has a reference to a film that happens later? That doesn't make any sense. But anyway... I'm not really sold on the cast. Danny McBride is interesting. I don't know. We'll see what happens with him. Uh, I like James Franco, but James Franco and Danny McBride in a serious alien movie? I don't know if that's really the right casting choices. Maybe they'll surprise me. I'm going to say there were, certain, there were a few shots in the new trailer that I liked of the Xenomorph and a few other things. Uh, it definitely looked like a step up from Prometheus, but that's not hard to do. Uh... But I'm still very iffy on it because at the end of the day, I do find Alien Covenant unnecessary. And speaking of necessary movies, The Predator. Oh boy, I can't say anything, but all I, I can't, not in terms of details, I can't be detailed about this. But who oh boy, a friend of mine sent me a message on YouTube telling me about what The Predator might be. Because there was apparently a script that might have leaked that talks about what might what the first draft might entail, what the plot synopsis might be, and all I gotta say, folks, it is shit. It sounds terrible. Now that's that's all I can say. I haven't spoiled anything. I've just said from what I saw, it's shitty. I mean, really, really shitty, and extremely disappointing. And I wish I could talk about it more, but I can't. Because Fox will probably try to silence me. Um, but hey, Fox, for watching this video, I didn't say anything. I just said what I heard sounds shitty. I hope you fix it. I hope maybe it's just a first draft and maybe they'll fix it and it won't be that bad. Um, but yeah, I, I really want to talk about it more. But if you look around on on the internet, you can find some of the stuff that I'm talking about. Um, and if the movie ends up being as bad as this plot synopsis sounds or is, the Predator is going to be worse than Predators. And it's going to kill the franchise. It's going to rip its spine out of its ass. Uh, but anyway... Yeah, I don't know what else to talk about. I mean, I talked about the few trailers. There's a few other. The Stream Factory, Shout Factory's announcing some new titles. Once again, I don't know what is going on over there. They announced The Lonely Lady as one of their uh, Shout Select or Shout or Shout Factory titles on Blu-ray. The Lonely Lady. 
what is one of the worst films ever made, according to critics. You're releasing that in, on a remastered Blu-ray? Who asked for this? Please, scream, please shout factory. I love you. That's why I'm sitting here, and that's why I'm telling you to stop doing this. It's a waste of your resources, it's a waste of your time, and it's a waste of your money. Just because you can get the rights to release a certain title on Blu-ray, it doesn't mean you should. Because if you keep this up, you're just going to lose money. Because I guarantee the lonely lady is not going to sell that many copies. Nobody saw it in the theater when it came out. Well, probably a few people, but not very many people at all saw it in the theater when it came out. It wasn't a top rental when it came out of VHS. It wasn't on DVD for a reason because there wasn't an audience for it. If, if there is our people who enjoy it for how bad it is, that's a very small minority. And you're going to charge over 20 bucks for a Blu-ray that you're going to sit in your warehouses or sit in Amazon or whatever and have a bunch of copies just collect dust. It isn't even worth it to do a limited edition thing. Because there's not going to be 3,000, 5,000 people that want to pony up the money to buy a Blu-ray of The Lonely Lady. You're going to be a lonely company if you keep this shit up. <laughs> I'm just so serious. You're going to be very lonely because you're not going to be in business anymore. If you keep doing this, this is not good. Stop releasing titles just because you can. Focus your time and energy and your resources into releasing titles that people actually want. People don't want the lonely lady. But anyway, I just had to throw that out there because I just keep seeing this for them. And I'm like, come on, man. Come on, Chow Factory. What are you doing? If you're that desperate for titles, then lower your amount that you're supposed to release every year. Nobody would complain if you release less titles, but better quality and better choices. Nobody's going to complain if you knock out if you knock off titles like The Lonely Lady off your release list, nobody's going to care. In fact, people will probably applaud you. Thank you. For Thank you for getting the point and, stop and stopping this production that's just going to go nowhere for you. I care. That's why I, I keep mentioning this stuff with Shout Factory. So... I don't know what else to say. I really don't. Except I'll just wait. And hopefully this guideline strike is taken care of. And If not, i got to wait three months for a, a guideline strike that I did not earn or deserve in any way whatsoever. A movie review, no matter how violent the content that's being described is not inappropriate content. It just isn't. At least it shouldn't be. Anyway, thanks for watching uh, this vlog. And as always, I will see you guys later. See ya.